The Stations of the Cross with Julian of Norwich. All that our Lord does is rightful, and all that he allows is praiseworthy, and in these two both good and evil are included. I do not say that evil is praiseworthy, but that our Lord's allowing it is praiseworthy. And understanding all this, I thought it was impossible that all manner of things should be well, as our Lord showed me. And I had no other answer from our Lord except this. What is impossible for you is not impossible for me. I shall keep my word in all things, and I shall make all things well. He that is highest and most glorious was counted less than nothing and utterly despised. For as much as he was pure and loving, even so much was he strong and able to suffer, for it was the sin of every man that shall be saved that he suffered for. And I, seeing all this through his grace, saw that the love he has for our soul is so strong that he sought our soul with great longing and willingly suffered for it, and paid for it in full. I saw that it is his will that we should know he does not take the fall of any one of those who shall be saved any harder than he took the fall of Adam. And we know that he loved Adam endlessly and looked after him safely in his need, and that now he has blessedly restored him in high unimaginable joys. And so now we have matter for mourning, because our sin is the cause of Christ's pain. And now we have lasting cause to rejoice, because endless love made him suffer. I saw part of the compassion of Our Lady St. Mary, for she and Christ were so joined in love that the greatness of her love caused the greatness of her grief. And so in this I saw the instinctive love led on by grace that all creation has for him. Our Lord showed me Our Lady St. Mary to teach us this, that it was the wisdom and truth in her when she beheld her Maker that enabled her to know him as so great, so holy, so mighty, and so good. filled full of compassion for all my fellow Christians, those much, much loved people who shall be saved. For God's servants, Holy Church, shall be shaken in sorrow and anguish and tribulation in the world as a cloth is shaken in the wind. If I look at myself alone, I am nothing. But when I think of myself and all my fellow Christians joined together in love, I have hope for in this joining lies the life of all who shall be saved. And so he looks on us with love and wants to make us his partner in good deeds.
It made me think of the holy handkerchief in Rome, which he has imprinted with his own blessed face. Many people marvel at the sadness and thinness of the likeness, when they know that he who marked it with his blessed face is the glory of heaven, flower of earth, and fruit of the virgin's womb. The meaning is this. It was the token and likeness of our dark cloak of foul black deeds that hid our bright, beautiful, blessed Lord. But I dare to say full surely, and we shall believe it, that there never was so fair a man as he, until his brightness was clouded by toil and sorrow, suffering and dying. When Adam fell, God's Son fell. For the holy joining that was made in heaven means that God's Son could not be separated from Adam, and by Adam I mean all men. Adam fell from life to death in the pit of this miserable world, and after that he fell into hell. God's Son fell with Adam into the depths of the virgin's womb, who was Adam's fairest daughter and he did it to take away Adam's blame, both in heaven and on earth, and with great power he fetched him back from hell. Our courteous Lord showed the weeping and wailing of the soul, meaning this, I know full well that you want to live gladly and merrily because of my love, bearing all the penance that may come to you. But since you cannot live without sin, you have to suffer for my love, all the sorrow, all the trouble, all the unhappiness that comes upon you. And this is so. But do not be too downcast by the sin that overcomes you against your will. And here I understood that our Lord looks on his servant with pity, not with blame. there is a lover of God anywhere on earth who is always kept safe from falling, I know nothing of it, for it was not shown me. But this was shown, that in falling and rising again we are always held close in one love. For our courteous Lord does not want his servants to fall into despair even when we fall into sin, for our falling does not stop him loving us. In this stark word sin, our Lord brought to my mind the shame, the despising, and the utter stripping he accepted for us in this life and his dying. He also brought to mind all the bodily and spiritual pains and passions of his creatures, for we are all stripped in part, and shall be while we follow our Master Jesus, until we are stripped of our mortal flesh and of all our inner desires that are not really good. I saw that he is everything that is good and comforting to us. He is our clothing. In his love he wraps and holds us. He enfolds us in love and he will never let us go. I saw a great communion between Christ and ourselves, for when he was in pain, we were in pain. 
all creation capable of feeling pain suffered with him. The blessed body hung alone there for a long time, and the nails wrenched it as the weight of the body pulled against it. And although the pain of it was sharp and bitter, it was also long drawn out. This showing of Christ's pain filled me full of pain, for though I knew well he suffered only once, yet it was his will to show it to me and fill my mind with it, as I had often asked before. I looked for the moment of his death with all my strength and thought to have seen him quite lifeless, but I did not see him so. And just at the same moment it seemed that I thought that life could last no longer. Suddenly, as I looked on that same cross, his expression changed to joy. Then our Lord brought this gladly into my mind, where is any part of your pain and grief now? And the reason why he suffers is that it is his will in his goodness to make us heirs with him of his joy. And in exchange for this little pain that we suffer here, we shall have a high, endless knowledge of God, which we could never have had without it. the firmament, the very earth itself, began to lose their nature with sorrow at the time of Christ's dying. For it is part of their nature to know and acknowledge him from whom their virtue springs as their God. So when his strength left him, their strength left them too, in sympathy as far as it could, in grief at his pain. And all men in general, that is to say even those who did not know him, had to bear the loss of every kind of comfort except the deep, quiet keeping of God. His body was in the grave until Easter morning, and from that time he never lay down again. For then the moaning and groaning was rightly at an end, and our mortal flesh that God's Son took upon him, which was Adam's old shirt, narrow, threadbare and short, was then made beautiful by our Saviour. All of us who shall be saved have, during this lifetime, an amazing mixture of good and ill within us. We have within us Jesus, our risen Lord. We have within us the misery of the mischief of Adam's fall and dying. And so now we have matter for mourning, because our sin is the cause of Christ's pain. And we have lasting cause to rejoice because of the endless love that made him suffer. <laughs> 